Hey everybody, this week we are out in Standing Rock on the reservation here doing a little bit of mule deer hunt with our good friend EJ Iron Eyes and no doubt the, the troublemaker, Jeremy. This is my third time I've been out here with you guys. How can somebody come out here and hunt this? You're an outfitter and you get your own tags and if you people want to hunt, they can get a hold of you. But there's other ways that they can come out and, and hunt on, on this land too, right? Yep, they can contact Standing Rock Game and Fish. Okay. Uh, there's an application process online. It's a draw license. Um, and if the odds are with them, they'll you, you draw a tag to come out. Otherwise, they can always give somebody like you a call and, yep, and come out and do some hunting with you too, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So when you set up a hunt like this, these are basically how many day hunts? Longer if needed, but three days has been pretty average. Hey, you guys, hang on to your heinies. These guys are incredible how they just sit in the trucks and they just glass everything. I've never seen any human beings that have as good an eyesight as these guys have. And they're fun to be with. You know, that's the other part that about any kind of hunting or fishing that I love. But these guys, I've done a couple hunts with them now. And the reason I keep coming back is that they are really, really good guides. They're some of the best guides that I've ever hunted with in my life. Uh, but they're real passionate about the sport and they're really passionate about the land uh, and their heritage. You know, this is this is a very special place. It's absolutely beautiful out there. And uh, you just, it you feel just, you get a little bit better sense of life when you have the, the chance to, to experience one of these hunts like that. Again, because you're really not looking at buildings. You're not looking at obviously other people for the most part. And uh, it's just a really, cool place and and these guys bring out the best in everything so what we're doing now is we spotted a couple animals and a couple mule deer and so what we're trying to do is make the right approach to them and that's a, that's a big thing about this is that obviously these these deer have great eyesight but the other part is their sense of smell is like incredible you have to work the wind at, to be able to get at these animals and they're typically always sitting up on the top of these ridges watching over everything. So they typically have their backs to the wind where that wind comes over their back and they're looking forward all the time watching everything. So they, they have the upper advantage at all times and that's why they get so big out here too, right? You look at the tops of some of these peaks, it's incredible how them animals go right up to the top of that. And most of the time, they like to get you within, you know, two to 300 yards so you can make that proper shot on that animal. You know, a lot of guys and I, myself, I struggle with anything that's over 300 yards. Uh, I can make the shot, but there's so much that's involved in that. There's a lot of wind out there. Um, so there's, it, there, it's, it's, I feel a lot more comfortable if I can get within that 300 yards. The trip alone, just going out there without even shooting an animal to be able to see the things that you get to see and to be able to walk through these valleys and, and up on these big ledges like that is just so incredible. Um, it's just a, it's a very cool experience. We were on bucks all day in this 30 mile an hour wind. And Nick, we, we found one earlier we were gonna go after and we ended up on the side of these buttes and we walked right up on him and he could see us. So we got stuck and he went around the corner so we didn't get a shot. Then his buddy was laying there and he let us walk by and we never found that one. So we checked a few other spots all day and we said, well, let's get back to the north part so we can look down into the wind. And EJ pulled over up here, said, I got some bucks out there. So we look watch this whole hillside and there's about what five five six about five six bucks up here well you want to know where it's Straight at up. turn that camera up that way he's up at the top of there <laughs> didn't come down a foot dropped him in his bed 280 <laughs> yards i don't know what the plan is right now well usually the guy that shoots him has to put him on his back <laughs> Has to put him on his back and carry him, hump him down. We're gonna have to find a way to get him down.
Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy and I were uh, running around chasing some big bucks in some basins this morning. EJ spotted this this big old bad boy from uh, from a ways away. We had two options. We ended up taking the taking the over and uh, getting up on what we uh, named the uh, the red grassy knoll. Jeremy got me within uh, 290 to 280. We got him up on a, up on a basin, popped him where he sat, and. Uh, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, big, big shout out and thanks to Iron Eyes, Iron Eyes Outfitters, uh, MRD Group, and Larry Smith uh, Outdoors. Thank you guys, appreciate it. This is a dream come true. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get old. A little, a little buck fever, I'm not gonna lie, but just, uh, like I said, a great experience, great time. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling her up as quick as I can. I think I found my special skill in life here. Rope rolling, you're gonna have to bring me back every year for this. Hey, let's talk about some of the top gear when you're gonna go out west on a western hunt. You know, to me, start off the thing is right away is that I'm taking my truck out there. I know I'm gonna be down a lot of areas where there's not really good roads. So really good tires, that's probably one of the most important things to start the trip off. I'm gonna be doing a lot of driving around and a lot of glassing. So I wanna make sure that I have a good spotting scope and either I'm in my truck, I'm gonna make sure I have a window mount, a good window mount on that makes a big difference. But I also, when I get out in the field and I start doing a lot of walking, I wanna have a spotting scope that's not too bulky. So I like something that's just a little bit smaller, but yet still has that clarification. Binoculars, always having a good pair of binoculars, but again, I'm trying to keep my gear down to a bare minimum. I love the Furies and any kind of binoculars like the Furies that actually have the range finders built right into them. These things are absolutely dynamic, especially for these hunts like that. A good scope. And I'll tell you, if you guys are looking at like a really good scope, this is one of my favorite scopes. I've got it on probably about four or five of my rifles. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a crazy expensive scope, but it's one of them kind of things when you start thinking about like, really that rifle is not gonna do me any good unless I got a really great scope on it. And this is a simple scope to use. It's not overcomplicated for a guy like me. A good tripod, you know, and the tripod is great because I can use this one on my rifle and I can use it on my spotting scope, so whatever I need. But this is a carbon fiber, uh, again, another Vortex product. I'm not saying that you got to go and buy Vortex products, but I'll tell you what, they got a lifetime warranty on everything they have. That's where I stick my money because I'm hard on things. So I want to make sure that, that, that when something happens, uh, they're going to back it up. A good pair of boots, you know, having the right support and I want something that's not rubbing on the back of it. Boots are very crucial when you're putting a lot of, lot of miles on, on your feet right there. Hey, and good clothing, something light. Uh, I learned that lesson a long time ago that light clothing, you know, is well worth spending the extra money on because it's gonna allow you to be able to go the distance and still stay comfortable and stay warm, and that's key. We're back out here again today. Brad and I were on a buck yesterday. Um, he's a four by four, big body. Brad wants to eat him, and his rack is cool. It comes up to almost touching him. It'll probably a little bit more than the hand width, but really cool looking pup, tall. And we made a play on him last night. We rushed it and he blew out. We had an opportunity for a shot, but we elected not to take it because it wasn't wasn't perfect. We came back down today and we glassed around all morning as the sun's getting higher. Um, we were changing location and I picked him up, bedded down. So we're gonna make a play. See if we can make this happen. Yeah, let's get her done. Get her done. Thanks, buddy.
stock, one miss. Right. It's a it's a neat buck. It's a very yeah. neat buck. Yeah. Height on him and stuff like that. Uh, All right, everybody, let's go check them out. So exciting. Four by four, too. Yeah. Right? Yep, four yeah. by four. Hey, Brad, congratulations, man. Oh, that very, was awesome. Hey, so let's a talk bunch. a little bit about this buck. This buck for two days has pretty much uh, uh, eluded us on a couple different situations. It is. And uh, just happened that Jeremy was up on top and uh, and spotted him again hey let's talk a little bit about how this all came together so i do environmental consulting work with brownfield environmental engineering and uh, over the last several years we developed a great relationship with jerry blomberg from mrd and mm -hmm. his team and worked with them on several projects and and so he included me to to come on with this hunt and uh, <laughs> that's awesome yes yeah say what I, I appreciate our friendship and work relationship and an opportunity to connect with some people that are like-minded and that really enjoy the outdoors and the, the adventure of, of harvesting a buck like this so hey you guys hang on to your heinies we got a lot more to go all right i'm tony with leroy meats um here we've got our smoked mac and cheese with some smoked brisket and some Bob's Raspberry Barbecue Sauce. Um, the smoked mac and cheese is our premium mac and cheese. We sell it out of the deli. Um, I add smoked paprika, salt and pepper to this, and we stick it in the smoker up until it's up to temp, um, about roughly an hour. It takes on a great smoke flavor with that cheese, thickens up nicely, and pairs awesomely with the barbecue sauce and the brisket. Joe and I are gonna give it a try, see how it turned out. The combination of the brisket and that mac and cheese, what was it, raspberry, delicious. Turned out great. Thanks, Joe. So, Brad here closed the deal it on this buck bit. finally. It took us a little bit. We started uh, yesterday evening, EJ spotted this buck and they tried to get a play on it. We said, well, let's go back down in the morning and see if we can get him. EJ looks off to the left and the same buck's up there in a little cut, up, cut bank up there. 370 on that shot up there earlier. Brad missed him barely by a hair. Uh, I was pretty discouraged on myself. I, I really was. It was pretty hard on myself. I'd, I'd done a lot of practicing and I was really dialed in with my rifle. But what a difference between working at your range and getting out here in some awkward spot and looking through some weeds and your neck is sore. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm not making any excuses. It was all me. The rifle's dialed in. But, uh, <laughs> It was, it was on me. It so was, when we were walking away, you were feeling a little down. And I, I was. What did I tell you? I said, hey, we'll get you one. Or we'll get you him. Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. Left him after that. We let him come do his thing. And we circled around on the north side of this. And we came up with the plan. Well, we dropped off on the west side this time. And we were working the wind. You know, ridges all the way this way. Just to get up to some higher glassing points. So I came up on the top of the hill above everybody. And I came, was looking glassing over this way, and I remembered where this little buck was at. About a half hour before he was up here acting funny, looking around like he, like something was up here. He kept looking up here. It was uh, Brad's buck was laying there next. I looked at the terrain before I even got down to back down to the boys, and I kind of knew a path to get a shot. And one of these little cutoff areas to cut off the creek and get a shot from is what worked pretty good. One of these shoots here. Got him into 170 yards, yeah. got him set up. Get the shooter on the deer first before I got before we got the camera set up because in case this buck stood up ready for the shot before the camera was, and that's what happened. We got Brad set up and I told him, you know, if this buck stands up and gives you an opportunity, don't hesitate. I could see the buck was already standing up and yeah. getting in position and Brad took the shot before we could get it on. <laughs> and that's how it happens sometimes, you know. Next, we gotta get this buck out of here. <laughs> out of all this train. Now the work begins. <laughs> but uh, I want to congratulate Brad here on a nice uh, shot. Good, thank you. Good thank shooting. you for getting me in the position. Nice hunting, you uh, know. We didn't give came up. Came together. It came yep. together. Perseverance I'll tell you paid what. off. 
how do you actually get these animals out of there unless you quarter them up and, and pack them out? And, you know, that can take a couple of trips to do where these guys have it dialed in pretty good. They got the right trucks, they got rope, they got wenches, and they know how to get around and, and try to manipulate some of the, the, the terrain to be able to get in place to, to get these deer out without dragging them for miles. Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I'll tell you what, when you come out here, it doesn't matter where you are, North Dakota, South Dakota, when you go through these gates like this, and especially when they're open like this, it is law that you have to close that gate. So if you open it, you have to close it. Hey, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. First class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beep. You're truly part of a family and there's nothing like it. Introducing Forever Barnwood. Transform your space with the warmth and character of a genuine Barnwood look. Forever Barnwood offers over 200 authentic Barnwood products. We are commercial and food safe. Our products are available in unlimited quantities while still providing the consistency you need to complete large projects. All of this while still looking like it came out of a 100-year-old barn. Forever Barnwood. Bring the history inside. But well, we're out here today. Jerry, Brad, and Nick. It's been a little bit tough hunting for us. Been dusty, windy, hot. But we found a buck we're gonna go check out. Jerry said they taste good, so so we're gonna go up and make sure it's a legal buck and we're gonna see what we can do. We'll go check them out. Get back at you later. Are you pretty steady on her? No. Okay, just practice getting steady. You got time. Lean back into Nick. That's what he's there for. He's there for you to lean on. He's also a gun wrist. We hire him out. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes in this outfit. That's right. We'll make it work. Hey Jerry, what an amazing trip out here in South Dakota mule deer hunt. Got two animals down already. You just had an opportunity on a really big animal and it just didn't pan out? No. Well, we watched him for an hour and a half and he watched us. <laughs> and so <laughs> That's so, the game. In, in the end, he just bolted out of his bed and, and took off. He could have been winded. Who knows, there are other does running around in the fields. Right. But uh, we were close. We were just seconds away. You guys right now are probably working at MRD on one of the biggest projects you guys have ever worked on, right? Well, not just for us, probably one of the biggest in the state ever. It's uh, a huge, let's talk a right. little bit about that real quick about that project. Well, it was a former paper mill for uh, the uh, Versal company. Okay. It changed hands in the last 150 years quite a few times. But recently we were awarded the contract to take down the pulp mill about actually about two thirds of the whole plant and the plant is it, it's just uh, unbelievably it, it runs from downtown wisconsin rapids out two and a half miles holy man and, and uh, that's a huge plant and from what the dnr says it, 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 this mill used 25 percent of the wood produced in the state we are heading back because i got a guide tomorrow you're going back out in the woods and, that's or right back out in the field yeah. i should say because there's not much for woods out here and you're going to hopefully get on one of them mule deer. We we got one spotted. Okay. Hey, Jer. <laughs> hey, Larry. Thank Larry, you. Thank I appreciate you. it, man. It's good to see you thank always. You. Yep. Hey, you guys, hang on to your hunting. Okay. So uh, we were on this buck earlier. It didn't work out. We re relocated for a third time. And uh, hopefully this time uh, we're, we're able to get get the shot. What do you think? I'll tell you in a few minutes, maybe. Probably half uh, hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's just great to see him. It's okay. Let's see, let's see what we can do.
Iron Eyes Outfitters 2024. This is our third time on this buck today. First time a coyote spooked him, second time a buddy spooked him, and then we re relocated him a third time and we're able to get on him. It was a pretty epic hunt. What do you think, Jerry? Oh, right at dark, right at dusk. This is something else. This is <laughs> this is the biggest deer I've ever shot. This was the, this, the, cool. this was the legit bottom of the ninth. Um, <laughs> you bet. The last day, and boy, I was thinking, stand up, stand up, stand up. And finally, he stood up and Jerry connected. So good job. How do you feel? Oh, I feel high as been <laughs> I'm ready to party. <laughs> Hey, my favorite part of my job is definitely traveling around in all these new experiences. And I'll tell you what, I wanna thank our good friends over at MRD. If you guys are looking for some great work or demolition work or construction work, make sure you give the guys over at MRD a call. Hey, this week I'll tell you, mule deer hunting, what a beautiful place to be. And I wanna thank Jeremy and EJ for the great trip and great experiences that they gave us. Hey, like we do each and every week, we wanna thank all of our military men and women for the great service they have given this country and continue to give this country along with all of our firefighters, paramedics, and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents. Hey, it is a great day to be alive, folks. God bless, and we'll see you guys and gals again next week. And thanks for joining us.